Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. Today is the day. It's the day that I've been talking about for such a long time. We are going to review the Pat McGrath Labs Divine Blush Collection. If you want to hear my thoughts, get demos of all the products that I picked up, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And I have been an avid Pat McGrath fan since the launch of her line. And I have been waiting for blushes for such a long time. We all have. My uh, bar was set very, very high today. I was lucky enough to receive the collection quite quickly. I would say for the most part, I guess it's because of where I'm located. I typically get the Pat McGrath packages really quickly. I think I'm close to the uh, their distribution center and I know typically their website is not the best with shipping but I very knock on wood oh my goodness I very rarely have problems but anyways yeah the collection came pretty quick the checkout process was very easy I stressed myself out for nothing because it seems that nothing is sold out which is amazing so if you waited don't worry there's no rush all of this should be available to pick up if you are interested so let's get into the collection itself of course it's a long-awaited collection her fans have been asking for blushes for a while but we also got some new items as well which I was surprised that she made a whole collection of multiple products and not just blushes, but I'm not complaining. She came out with nine individual blushes. Now, I did not pick up all nine. I picked up seven and I will talk about that. She also came out with a highlight. She also came out with an eyeshadow quad. She came out with a few lip colors that she normally does. A lot of times I don't pick up the lip colors because it's just extra money added on and added on and I'm all about the powder products, but I did actually pick up a lip color from this collection because it appealed to me very much. So we're going to get into the part that's the most important, the blushes. I did skin swatches on my face as well for you to see those. So <laughs> let's go over the details of these. We will start off with the packaging. So all of the blushes are going to come in this beautiful purple or lilac, I should say, carton. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to flip it over to the back here if you need to pause and you want to take a look. But light purple, like a lilac like this, is my all-time favorite color. So I am going to keep all of these boxes. They are just so stunning and her formulation for these are called the Skin Fetish Divine Blushes. Now these are made in Italy as I believe everything in this collection is and they have an 18 month shelf life. How the box works is you pull it like this and then boom pops the blush in her normal black lacquered packaging. Now the name of the product is going to be in very small words right here. All of them say Fabulous Flirtations and Sexquisite Seductions. Okay Pat. Um, now what I do not like about this compact is it's a new compact it's not magnetic which I would much prefer it to be you have to push this thing and honestly it's a struggle and a half to get these blushes open. I don't know, maybe they'll ease up over time with more use, but these are really hard to open. By the way, this is random. Excuse my damp hair. It's just, I needed to film this. I wasn't gonna wait for it to dry. But anyways, in each of the individual blushes, you are gonna get a mirror, and then you, of course, can see the beautiful embossment. It really is so photogenic. I am so sad I touched all of them before I got a good photo of them untouched. But that essentially is what all of the blushes are going to look like. They do all come in the same curtain. And as stated before, there are nine shades in the collection. Each of these are going to be 38 dollars and the majority of them have a demi matte finish some of them also will have a pearl to them as well which will leave more of a shimmer to the cheek but it's not super shiny in a way that emphasizes texture i find but nothing super flat matte but her demi matte formula it is matte but it's a flattering matte if that makes sense the key terms that she uses to describe this formula are petal soft touch silk velvet powder feather light mistake proof application buildable vivid color color purity, satin matte, and a satin pearl finish, like I just said before. What I purchased, I did not purchase any of the blushes individually. I purchased all of them in a trio. So there are different kind of bundles on the site. You can buy all of the blushes. You can buy a customized trio of the colors that you want, which I think is the best deal because you can get three for $96. You save a few bucks there. I picked up two of the curated trios, the Nude Flirtation, which I believe are 
three of the lightest shades and then one that is a little bit more pink and cool toned. That's kind of the middle shades, Fleur Fantasy. I did not have interest in picking up the shades in the Futuristic Fleur, which they just seem to not be for my skin tone. They're very, very vibrant and I did not want them. Now I ended up with seven. I don't know how, but I think an extra blush got thrown into uh, my order. I'm not complaining. And it's from those three shades that I wasn't interested in. It's a deeper shade here. I will show you the shade Paradise of Venus. I mean, I, you can see why I wasn't originally gonna pick it up for myself, but I did apply it for you in the demos. All that aside, I am going to get straight into the swatches and the demos so you can see how each color looks on me and I will come back with my final thoughts on the blushes. All right, so for the color demos, my hair is wet. I had a full day of work, <laughs> so I just don't feel like waiting for my hair to dry. It's already six o'clock. So we're gonna start off with the lightest shade, which is Flirtatious. Flirtatious is described as a soft beige pink with a demi matte finish. Oh, I don't wanna ruin the embossment. Okay, so here's how I'm swatching it. Can definitely see that demi matte finish with the shine it looks beautiful I'm gonna be using a lot of different brushes for the blush application so just be prepared Wow that looks really stunning I'm gonna go in with the second layer if you have fair skin you're absolutely going to love this shade it's very very light maybe a touch lighter than what I would typically prefer it has almost a cooler undertone it's a bit more neutral as well so this is like a great everyday color and by the way my base underneath I don't have any powder on I just have my Pat McGrath base products so this is flirtatious the next shade is nude Venus which is a peachy pink with a golden pearl so you can see this is very different from the first one I would say it has less of that demi matte shine this one has a little bit more pigment, but I did kind of beat my brush in hard there. I want you to be able to see the color, but you could easily go lighter than I did. Really beautiful and it's blending in very nice. So again, this one is Nude Venus. The next shade that we have is Desert Orchid. This is a bronze rose with a golden pearl. That's that third shade down. So if you like warm blushes, this one's gonna be the blush for you. You can see that golden pearl here. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter with my application because they seem to have some pickup. Yeah, really pretty. Let's build on that one a little bit more. Ooh, this is gonna be gorgeous with warm looks. You can see that soft golden pearl, absolutely stunning. The next shade is Nymphette. This is a soft pink with a golden pearl. That's that fourth shade right here. And taking a look, this is probably the color that I would gravitate towards most out of these four so far. I did three taps in. So for me and my undertone, I just feel like this is a very natural color for me and kind of what I prefer. I like that kind of golden shift that it has, very subtle. I guess golden pearl to add warmth, but also it has that pink base to really brighten up the cheek. It depends if you like bronzy looks, you might really love Desert Orchid. But if you like pinky looks, bright, fresh, kind of summery looks, I really love this Nymphat shade. The next shade that we have is Divine Rose. This is a cool mauve rose with a demi matte finish. It's that bottom one right here. And taking a look, this looks like it might be actually one of my most used colors that I'll end up using because I've been loving cool toned looks so much. This is the perfect cool toned blush. So if you've been looking for a good blush that looks good with the cooler tones, if you're starting to get into them, mauve colors like these typically look really nice. So I'm gonna do two taps. So my approach is to go in lighter so you can kind of see the flexibility with the product I've learned. You can get a really light wash like that and I'm gonna build it up. So these blushes are very beautiful and buildable. And you see this has such a natural look to the skin. This one has that demi matte finish. You can almost see that sheen, but it is kind of matte. So it's not a flat matte that's gonna dry your skin out, but it has a very skin-like finish to it that's not overly glowy. The next shade that we have is Cherish, which is a neutral pink demi matte. You can easily see which color that is. This is one that kind of scares me. It's very, very bright. I think that this one might look a bit garish if you apply it too much, but let's see it also seemed to carry a little bit more pigment than some of the other shades and it also even though it has a demi matte finish it felt a little bit more dry but let's see let's see I'm gonna go light with this one like <laughs> I already had a little bit of powder from swatching it so I'm like okay yeah 
This one has pigment to it, so use a light hand if you're light like me. Oh, what a fresh flush for summer though. It almost has like some coraliness to it. Now, I don't know that this is a color I would reach for very often. It's not per my taste, but it is still really pretty if this is kind of your style, especially if you have a deeper skin tone and you need these more pigmented blushes. This one might be really, really fun, but you can see how much more neutral the other shade is. Last shade, hold on. The last shade that I'm gonna swatch is Paradise Venus. This is described as a terracotta demi-matte. You can see this is the last shade. This is the shade that I was gonna pass on. This one is part of those three that I just knew wouldn't work for my skin tone. I'm still gonna use Use it though. I just did like one tiny tap in the product just to see if we could make it work. We could. I went really, really light. I'm gonna try and add a little bit more. This is a beautiful terracotta blush and it definitely works for me. But again, I'm going very, very sparingly and slowly and it's just it's probably just a little bit patchy for me reapplying foundation and taking off my makeup. I will say this one is not applying quite as smooth as these others as well. And I just think that has to do with it being so intense and me being this skin tone. I think this is a beautiful tone though. And if you have a medium to deep complexion, you will really enjoy this. On me, I just don't think it's worth the $38. Um, yeah, this is the last blush swatch of Paradise Venus. So here are the swatches we're going to go over quickly one more time. Flirtatious, Nude Venus, Desert Orchid, Nymphette, Divine Rose, Cherish, and Paradise Venus. Now as far as the colors that I would recommend the most, and this is if you have my skin tone and the same kind of taste and makeup that I do, because it really depends on your skin tone, your undertone, and what kind of makeup looks that you would wear. But for me, the ones that I would reach for the most are probably Nude Venus, just because it's like a nice neutral rose kind of shade with a little bit of warmth to it, but I prefer my blushes more on the pinky side, which is why I like this. Nymphette is the perfect everyday pink for me. It has that little bit of golden pearl to it, so this is probably my favorite as far as an everyday blush that I would reach for. And then lastly, because I just truly love a nice cool toned blush because of all the cool toned looks I've been doing, Divine Rose is absolutely stunning, and I highly recommend those three. Those are just to my taste of blushes, though so take that with a grain of salt. With that being all said and done I did end up doing my face makeup all over again and the blush that won today was Nude Venus. I just think for me this is going to be one of my favorites in the collection. The ones that I most use personally for my skin tone. Now I must say I do think I set the bar a little bit too high because we had been waiting so long for these blushes. Like they had to be amazing. Like there was no other way it would be acceptable for her to launch blush that weren't amazing. I don't think it's a formula that completely knocked my socks off, if I'm being completely honest. One thing I would say is to definitely set your face. Because I was washing off foundation and applying, I did find that the times, especially with the deeper shades, that I didn't set my foundation. Application was a little bit more tricky, but that is not unusual. Most blushes are going to have that issue, but again, I was expecting an exceptional formula. But I think if you wait for either your foundation to dry down, not like me because I I'm so impatient. A powder, you will be fine, but it's not the easiest blush formula that I've ever used, but it's by far not the hardest. I do find the shades to be very blendable. When you look at her description of what the formulation should be that I read prior to application, I 100 agree with the feather light feel. These have a very feather light feel on the skin, which do help with the blendability there, but it is very, very buildable. I would suggest unless you're playing in the super light colors to use a lighter hand if you are of a lighter complexion like myself and what's amazing about these is they are buildable so I do think a lot of these colors are going to be great for a quite a large range of skin tones and that's what I prefer in a blush I don't prefer instant pigmentation right away I do prefer something that is more buildable that being said these do pack a punch if you're heavy-handed so just be light-handed
did that. I enjoy that the mattes aren't a very drying matte. The demi matte is perfect. It's not going to give you a crazy sheen on the face, but it is still flattering if you do have drier skin. And something that I did fail to mention in the application that I did notice is that these blushes, this is what makes them more special. They're very blurring to the skin. There is something about this formula, I think having to do with how smooth it is, that it actually smooths the skin. I notice my cheeks look blurred when I have these blushes on. So this is probably one of the most blurring blushes I've ever used. And for that, that kind of makes up for the fact that I felt like it wasn't the smoothest application that I was expecting. Now, I do think that that could be aided, but I do have blushes in my collection where no matter what situation they're in, they are going to blend on seamlessly into the skin. I don't feel that way with these blushes. However, if you set it up right, they do apply very, very easily. But I think what makes them special is how blurring they look on the skin. And I really enjoy that. So overall, Morgan, like, do you love it? These blushes, do you think they're worth the hype? I definitely think it's worth picking up one or two shades. These are $38 individual blushes. These are a luxury experience. The embossing is absolutely stunning. And I do think it's worth picking up one or two. Now, is it worth picking up the whole collection? Definitely not. These are expensive and they are worth the splurge for the colors that you think you are really going to enjoy. All right, guys, we are going to move on to the next portion of this review, which is going to be the eye quad. So this is called the Venus and Fleur's Luxe Quad Voyeuristic Vixen. Oh my gosh, the names are just always so incredible in her brand. I'm going to flip this over for you if you need to see the ingredients that are in here, but you'll see this is made in Italy with an 18 month shelf life. Again, this is the carton. It's going to come in very similar to the blush unicarton over here. When you open it up, it opens the same way. It is going to reveal the quad, which just like her previous packaging is just the simple black lacquered packaging. It does not have that weird press opening that the blushes have, which I am very happy about. It's just the magnetic opening. And then of course, you reveal the quad. Now this is 58 quite pricey and here are the colors I think they're so beautiful I will go over in the demo the finishes that you're gonna get in here and the formulations just wanted to mention that online this does say it is limited edition take that with a grain of salt you know you never really know what's limited edition or not as you can see it is the palette that I'm wearing today so I just want to get into the demo so you can kind of see how it works all right it is time to go into the quad now I did a very very simple look I didn't even use one of the shades because I don't know I feel like the way she curated this quad it's hard to use all four shades she has two very very glittery shades that really don't play off each other well in my opinion you either really only use one or the other when it comes to ease of creating a look kind of in a hurry. I skipped out on using this shade right here, which I believe is called Twilight Bronze. So the textures you're getting in here are one matte, one regular shimmer, and then you're getting, it's not necessarily a Blitz Astral. It has a little bit of flakiness to it in the best way possible. You can see it's very, very metallic and it has a very strong shift. This is the shade Rose Fire Nectar and it's like an extremely, you can see that shift here. I don't know if it'll focus, but it's an extremely gold shade and then it shifts to an extremely rose kind of shade. It's really beautiful but it has a very slick texture to it that could easily make a mess all over the eyes. The best way to describe it is flaky but it's not like flaky in a way to when it flakes it's gonna stick because it's not a creamy sticky texture. It's very lightweight feeling. And then we have Twilight Bronze down here which is not quite as flaky but it does you can see in the pan right here. There is a little bit of fallout but it also has that very lightweight kind of powder feel to it. This one's more of a metallic whereas this one is like a foiled duochrome is the best way that I can describe that. Foiled duochrome, metallic shimmer, and a matte. So we're going to go in with the matte shade right here after dusk. Now be careful with this shade. It is extremely packed with pigment. So I'm just going to pack that color on right 
in the outer part of my eye. You can see that is Pat McGrath for you. And if you have a lighter skin tone like myself, definitely take up my technique because there is no median shade over here. Just this really deep one that you have to kind of make work for you as both the transition shade and the smoke shade if you are not going to dig into another palette, which is totally feasible. You just have to be patient. I don't know how I got it blended out so well over here. I think I packed on just a little bit too much over on this eye because you can see there is a lot of depth carrying. So I'm gonna go in with a clean brush and work it out. But luckily it's Pat McGrath. We love her quality and you can see with that clean brush, it made the world a better place. I'm just gonna put just a little bit more and this is what you pay for people. Really beautiful. I'm also gonna run this along the lower lash line. And this shade has a little bit of burgundy plum to it. Really pretty, really flatters a brown eye. It's not just your typical brown. You know, like I said, these two shades, I almost feel as if, if you're creating a quick kind of look, you can't really use both. So of course, Rose Fire Nectar was gonna have to be the first one that I tried. And in the best world, you probably should apply some glitter glue because like I said, this is a bit flaky. It's not making a mess on my eye, but I just feel like I'd feel more secure with a glitter glue, which is how I normally feel with her Blitz Astral shade. But you can see this is very, very special on the eyelid. It's a different formula from her. She hasn't come out with this, but it is beautiful. This is why I love Pat McGrath. She did it with this formula for sure. And I'm gonna go in with the shimmer shade right here. Moonlight Liaison. I mean, this shade's kind of nondescript. It's a great highlight shade. And here is the look. It's pretty simple. I didn't do anything crazy, but obviously we have the star of the show right here, which is stunning. Overall, I'm head over heels for these glitter formulas. I don't think these are formulations for everybody, but that being said, if you're a Pat fan, I'm hoping it's because you're a fan of her glitter. You might not be, but I know the reason I'm a Pat fan is because of her glitter formulations. And I really feel like she did that with these quads. And sometimes she won't do that with the quads. She'll just put in some of her other formulas which are also really great but I am very impressed with this new formulation from her I think it's wonderful is it a bit messy yes if you're not into mess or something super metallic then this might not be for you but I am I definitely am so this is for me I think it's stunning even this shade right here that I didn't get to use I really love the formulation on this now is it a color story that knocks my socks off no it's actually quite dare I say wearable it it's not, you know, bright blues and purples, but it is something that is a bit understated for Pat McGrath. And I think that this is a really great way to venture out of your regular routine if you do wear neutrals. And I really like it. I do recommend it. You saw how easily that matte blended as well. And I think it's a decently curated palette. Now, is it the best quad she's ever come out with? I don't think so. I'm not jumping for joy with this. I enjoy it a lot. The formulations are solid, but it's not anything that I think you have to absolutely run out and buy if you don't have it. It's not a missing piece in your collection, but it is beautiful. Okay, and the next thing that I applied was the highlight. So we will get into this Skin Fetish Divine Glue Highlighter. Now it's in basically the exact same packaging as the blush. It's just called the Divine Glow. Now this is the only shade that she came out with. I thought it would be interesting if she were to have come out with more shades, but again, same packaging, made in Italy, 18 month shelf life, same exact component as the blushes as well. The shade here is called Golden Nectar and it's like a champagne with some goldenness but I almost see a little bit of rosy hues in there. This has the press opening which I cannot stand. I'm not a fan and here's how it looks. Honestly with the blushes this looks very unexciting. There's no embossment. Kind of underwhelming. This is $48. That's crazy for a highlight. It's a high polished pressed gold highlighter with skin loving botanical oils blah 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 satiny powder I do agree it's a very satiny powder it is what I'm wearing today I'm just gonna show you the demo so you can see what I think of it but by the way you're also getting 4.6 grams of product okay I just want you to see how I apply it here we go we are going into the skin fetish divine glow highlighter this seems to be like a true kind of champagne shade maybe a touch of 
of rosiness as we shift over here, but it looks to be a natural kind of skin tone champagne shade. I'm gonna use the Kaleidos H1 brush to apply, but first I wanna talk about the formulation here. It's not like the other formulas. The holiday formula that Pat McGrath came out with, it was like almost like a cream putty hybrid formulation. I did not like that highlighter. And then the Divine Rose highlight that came out, which was also kind of like more of a putty highlighter. This one is definitely more powdery for sure, but it's very, very smooth as you can see. So it's more powdery than the other two highlighters that have come out, but it does have a slick texture to it. You know, you're not going to get a ton of fall out with this. So I'm using this brush. You can see there is some powder, but I went pretty light with this first layer here and you can see it sinks into the skin stunning, but you can also get quite a pop. Like I applied way too much on this side at first go and it was very very metallic now this is a stunning formula it really just blends in seamlessly with the skin it blends into the skin not onto the skin is how i like to say you can't see the beginning and ending point of where you apply the product and of course it is a highlight so it doesn't necessarily smooth texture but i have to say it's not an extremely texture emphasizing highlighter like some other highlighters that i have so overall i mean this is a stunning formula. It's really seamless to apply, very easy to apply. You don't have to over blend the product to get it to look natural into the skin. You can get a really light kind of sheen to the skin, but you can also get it very metallic on this skin as well. I think, now this is just a first impression, first use, but this actually might be my favorite highlighter that Pat's ever come out with. Now, I liked the Divine Rose highlight that came out quite a lot. I recommended that for a long time, but I really prefer this color and I think I prefer this formulation so this is definitely a thumbs up. Yeah I really really love this highlight. I definitely recommend it if you have the money to spend. I'm never gonna tell somebody to spend $50 on a highlight but it's, it's really nice. You don't need it, but it's my favorite highlight from her. Take from that, as you will, it's stunning. I mean, you see that? It's so seamless into the skin. All right, we're gonna get into the last product. It's gonna be pretty quick. We're gonna talk about the lipstick that I picked up. Like I said, there are a few other formulas that came out. I was really interested in this Dream Lover lipstick. It is her matte trance formula. Here is the box that it comes in, really stunning. This is also made in Italy. Said that a lot today. 18 month shelf life and here is the color right here and it's in her normal packaging again I'm gonna let the application portion do all of the talking for this so this is the dream lover lipstick right here it has a little bit more warmth than I thought it would compared to the packaging of the collection I would have liked this to have been something other than the typical black lacquer packaging I think if it went along with this lilac shade I would be so much more in love now this is her matte trance formula but you can see it has creaminess to it. I'm gonna apply it first without a lip liner just so you can see the shade on myself. If you're familiar with her line, she has a very smooth, easy to apply matte formula. And this color is so pretty. It's a great everyday color. I am gonna go in with just a bit of her Supernatural lip liner around the edges just to get it to my liking. I do think if you have a skin tone that is similar to mine, you could use a little bit of manipulation with a lip liner, but it's not essential. Like I could still just put this on and be okay, but just because it's me, I am gonna apply just a little bit of a lip liner. There we go, that just added just a touch more depth to my lips, but that's Dream Lover. All right, you guys, there we have it. That was my review on the entire Divine Blush collection. So what are the hits? What do you need to get? Here are the key points that I want you to take away from this. I really do enjoy the blushes. I think they are extremely nice. Do I think they're this groundbreaking formula? No, but I will say I can't get over how blurring they are in the skin. That is what really is making me uh, second guess this. But I would suggest, you know, if this is something that you're interested in, it definitely won't her to pick up like one or two of the colors you like you know maybe not the whole total collection but one or two I think would make you happy. The quad, while I do really enjoy it, it's not something that you need to run out and get but it is really stunning and as a pack collector I do not feel bad about having this at all. I regret nothing. The highlight, again, it's something you really don't need, but it's like good. Pat did a good job with it. Again, I regret nothing purchasing this. I'm extremely biased. 
I love Pat, okay? It's super good. And then the lipstick definitely was not something that I needed, especially since the packaging isn't even limited edition. Essentially, I paid for the box, I feel like. So this is the one where I, I'm, <laughs> I probably could have done without, but I mean, it's a gorgeous everyday color. So whatever. That This is probably the only one where I'm like, okay, I probably didn't need that. <laughs> but there you have it. Those were my thoughts on the Divine Blush Collection. Let me know if there's any more details that you need. Is there another video that I need to do? Let's talk about it in the comments. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.